Yep. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. Councillors Amos. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, no. Right, welcome to today's meeting. This is a public meeting and members of the public and press are permitted to report on the proceedings. Reporting includes filming, photographing, making audio recording and providing commentary on proceedings. Please note this meeting is recorded and streamed live. These recordings are published on the relevant meeting page of the Council's website. Choosing to attend this public meeting, you are deemed to have given your consent to being filmed or recorded and for any footage to be broadcast or published. If the alarm sounds, the premises must be evacuated immediately. Do not spend time collecting personal belongings. Uh, all emergency escape routes are clearly signed. Once you have left the building, the assembly point is in the high street opposite the guild hall. Members are reminded to use their microphone when speaking. Welcome to today's meeting. I'm Mike Johnson for, for the record. And we move to agenda item one, appointment of substitutes. There are no substitutes today, Chair. Yeah. Declarations of interest. Councillor Roberts. It, it, it's a declaration of not having an interest, really. <laughs> Just, but uh, I, I've been involved in the, um, the A&E development facilitating uh, local residents uh, making comment uh, but I've taken advice I haven't made any predetermined I've taken advice uh, it's okay for me to I feel well to let you know thank you for that Councillor Roberts Agar. thank you chair um, the application is in my ward and I do know a number of people involved but none of them are close friends or anything like that so and I haven't expressed a view Thank you for that. Public participation. Uh, we have a problem with the cameras. Resume when we go. <laughs> I think actually, Councillor, I must have put in the wide angle on. <laughs> we are back live, as you can see, with those with eyes in the back of their head. Um, public representation. Okay. Uh, there is none, Chair. Thank you for that. So we move directly to item five, first application, the Royal Hospital, Charles Hastings Way. Hello. If I could find a bit of paper. Sorry. You'll be aware, having had. Um, most of you attended full council that the resolution in terms of changing minded to refuse went through. So I have a brief script. Um, should we, on this occasion, make uh, a resolution decision contrary to officer recommendation? The planning committee resolves to refuse a planning permission on the following grounds and delegates to corporate director of planning and governance subject to consultation with Chair and Vice-Chair to confirm the final wording of the above grounds and issue the decision notice. Those would then be reported back to the following. Approval contrary to recommendation for refusal, it's been recommended approval, we will resolve to grant planning permission subject to conditions and completion of a six agreement. Again, delegate authority Director of Planning and Governance, subject to consultation with Chair and Vice-Chair, 
Planning Committee to confirm the conditions to be imposed. And finally, if it's addition regarding uh, section 106, time will apply. Delegate authority to the corporate director, chair and vice chair to confirm the conditions to be imposed heads of terms of section 106 agreement on completion of section 106 agreement to issue the decision. So if we actually refuse an in-country day, we'll go through that process. Otherwise it will be recorded in the minute will become part of the process now. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and not, if we make a decision contrary to uh, officer's approval, then we'll provide us his expertise in terms of spelling out the basis on which we're going to make that decision. Presentation, please. The application reference 21 slash 00987 slash full is for the construction of a single story extension to the northeast elevation of the Aikenbury East Building to provide a new urgent and emergency care facility. I'd like to draw members' attention to the one late paper on this item, which is from the residents at their height, and it was circulated on Tuesday. Please, Margaret. This slide taken from another application shows the entire and the relationship to the wider area, including Newtown Road and the heights to the north. Right, please. This is the site location plan. The wider site is in blue and the application site is shown at the top of this plan and the relationship to the application site can be seen. The, I've pointed the arrows in the direction of the thing. Dwellings on the heights have rear windows which face across Newtown Road towards the hospital campus. This view is taken from the pavement on Newtown Road looking towards the Aiken Breeze building. You'll note the change in levels and that the building is lower than the road. And another view towards the site and other brick hospital buildings are shown on the right. These are the existing elevations of the building. The black rectangle on the south elevation is the link to the main hospital. The east elevation is the side that the extension is proposed to be built on and to the north, there were links to other hospital buildings. Please. This is a view from the edge of Worcester Woods. You can see the link from the building to the main hospital, which goes over the road, which runs around the corner. This is another view, and you can see the change in levels within the Acre building ascending as you move towards Newtown Road. To the south of the building behind the white wall is the oxygen store, which was addressed in a previous application. As you can see, the works have commenced on site. This shows the existing elevation of Aiken Beach. And a view from the road around the site with a view showing the east elevation. This plan is shown in your reports and it shows the proposal plus another and plus the other enabling changes. These are shown in this slide, which was in your report, and it shows the new lift shaft adjacent to the ramp, which physically links Aiken Beach to the main hospital and is going to an ambulance door. This plan shows the ground floor layout and you can see the range of services in the area, areas the fitting out of the building will incorporate. This slide is the extension area specifically. 
which includes the main waiting room, three triage rooms, toilets, two x-ray rooms, a CT scanning room, relative rooms, eight individual rooms, six bed ward area, two assessment rooms, offices and staff, staff zones, utility and service areas. This plan is also in your reports and is an annotated version of the proposed east elevation showing the extension and how it would appear the existing building, which is proposed to extend at ground floor with planted roof. Proposed, proposed north and south elevations and include, um, include the lift shaft adjacent to the ramp to the main building. See the works are commenced on site and that includes the lift shaft which is there just adjacent to that ramp. Here's the proposed west elevation which includes a new canopy over ambulance bays. This last plan shows proposed changes to the staff mess area, which includes storage and minor external changes. The application is recommended for approval with the conditions set out in section nine of the report. Uh, thank you, Sally. Just for the record, um, I know the residents had concerns and we've been here before in terms of noise from ventilation plant. So the comments from local residents are in your papers. Um, they chose not to uh, attend and read them out. We'll, we will take them as read, but if there are any questions, I'm sure either I or Andy will use the background to it from the fund. So on to discussion members. Questions, comments? But you're, obviously, I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of the uh, residents because they, they would be here to do that and they present their, their late but, but, but I'm very involved with them and, and I've got to say very sympathetic uh, with, with some of their situation and find themselves in I know that they would welcome a new uh, developments to the hospital they want to see a better hospital serving people there's absolutely no doubt about that at all and any misconception about that would be very, very unfair on them. Um, but just to put things in context, and it's all about context, over the last uh, two years, I suppose, they, they've suffered pretty badly. Um, they were presented with plans for the Aikenbury uh, block uh, and something was built which was totally different, completely different to what they expected. Um, and it was built without the benefit of plan approval. Something like two years later, and if I'm a few months out, I apologise for that, but something like two, two years later, the um, application retrospectively was put forward before this committee, and what was it going to do? It was hardly going to say, uh, refuse it, and so it was approved. So it's in that context that the uh, residents uh, uh, make the comments that they do. And, the, and the, their concerns pretty... Um, Low down, I think, and they want to be good neighbours. They particularly worry about the noise. I mean, if they they would really like to have had an agreed uh, agreement of what the ambient uh, uh, noise level is now, and so that in you know if, if there's an increase, they can say, yeah, there we are. It is an increase. Is it acceptable? It was a different matter, you know. But if it's acceptable, it's acceptable. If it's not acceptable, and it's something for for reg services. But that. That's why um, in, in the uh, uh, submission, I think it, it talks about that we, we, we could do better. Um, and so it's a balance for me between the, 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 the concerns and the real concerns and genuine concerns of these local residents and the position the hospital finds. In my opinion, a hospital that serves county was built in the wrong place too small and to the wrong funding model and so they're having to they're, they're having to accommodate uh, the situation they find themselves in they've got an accident and emergency unit which is landlocked and they've got to do something so taking into account the sympathy i've got for uh, for the residents in the immediate area and the need, general need for the uh, population of the county 
down to support the sector. Thank you, David. Um, we have on, on standby Richard Williams, who's the principal officer to WRF. Call him up and opinion. Hello, good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon. Um, Primary concern, certainly from the residents who've issued their comments that are, represent themselves. Can you give us some notion of current, rather than the measured value, because it's peculiar times, what the ambient noise level would be and what the impact of this installation would be on the ambient noise level? Um, yes, certainly. Um, it would be probably quite... Um, useful for me to go to the beginning of the uh, lifespan of this planning application when it was uh, first introduced as a retrospective uh, piece of work. Um, the questions around the background noise level were originally raised by us um, because the consultancy, Sandy Brown, had decided to take the background noise measurements on the roof of the building, which we didn't consider to be representative of what would be seen on the ground and uh, what local residents would be experiencing. So as a consequence of that, we instructed them to take some further background noise measurements. Um, Naturally, a number of residents picked up on this fact and uh, raised their concerns and anxieties quite rightly at the time. Um, they did report back to us some uh, uh, a number of measurements, which I won't go into in too much detail. However, um, running at the same time, there was an extant noise complaint uh, concerning the hospital. And because of the impending planning decisions and this complaint, I decided to oversee the work that both sections of WRS were undertaking. And um, we, and we completed our own independent uh, noise assessment and investigation in November, 2020. At that time, the traffic levels were still suppressed as we were in a, a form of lockdown. Um, I think traffic was about 60% of what we normally see. The reason why range traffic is a, an important point is because most of the noise in the local environment there is dominated by the M5 and the local Newtown Road. So we, we generated our own comprehensive set of background measurements and benchmarks independent of Sandy Brown, the consultancy representing the trust. And so we have used that data to um, evaluate the current predicted emissions from the new plant equipment installation. And so the advice that we've provided um, the committee on the current application and the prior uh, 21 slash 00319 slash full application uh, has been, is effectively the same. We, I undertook some calculations uh, against the uh, background noise levels that we have, which we took in four separate locations between the hours of 10 o'clock at night and two o'clock in the morning. Because our primary concern with noise from any of this equipment is nighttime noise, because daytime, the road traffic would drown out any noise generated by any proposed uh, installation of air handling equipment proposed on the roof of the Aikenbury building. Now, <clears throat> when we come to uh, assessments, we, we are satisfied that the equipment operating at full tilt will be below the background noise level and will be in to a large extent inaudible to most of the residents. Um, now, we've also recommended that to make sure that, that this is delivered on the ground correctly, that a, a post-completion condition is applied to make sure that what's being predicted is actually going to be delivered and that anything that's delivered does that which doesn't comply the planning authority and ourselves can hold them account over to require them to instigate further improvements in noise mitigation which can be done if necessary 
So, so that that's where we stand with it. I can fully understand people's anxieties uh, over the hospital and noise, but we, we've come across similar installations like this, not necessarily associated with hospitals, but with supermarkets, etc. And the same anxieties do come up, but with modern equipment, um, you do tend not to see problems. I must say. So, I, I hope that goes in way into sort of answering the question that the councillor has. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. So we have there an assurance that hopefully the machinery will conform and if it doesn't, there are measures which can be technically implemented to make it conform. So hopefully those uh, members of the public listening in, that would give them some level of comfort, but the proof of the pudding will be in the construction. Any other questions? Jenny. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a very congested site, traffic-wise, um, and I use the bus to go up to the hospital I need to, and it's quite often gridlocked. Now, um, I'm not clear from the plans that we've got exactly how much of encroachment there is onto the road that heads back to Newtown Road. Um, is obviously keeping that as a potential traffic moving facility would be quite important. So could you just confirm that that road isn't being built on? You mean the, the way along the side of Aikenbury, as you come past the, where all the ambulances are stacked up, and you come down the hill a little bit, but before you get to where the passage goes over the road, it used to be a turn off that buses could take to take them back onto Newtown Road. This is some time ago. Um, and that road is not going to be built on, is that right? I understand it, that will remain, or it will be displaced and, and, and moved slightly over. But from the plan you can see in figure two in your report, that would run in front of the, the front of the A&E building. Slightly masked it by my red circle, which runs around the extension. But you can just see in front of it that 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 would remain turned about. Um, it's been put <coughs> by the highways team is considered acceptable, as I understand. Okay, well, if the road remains, that I don't have a problem with it. Can I ask, is the assumption that um, emergency ambulances will have the same approach? They'll come around the old a &E and down, or are they going to come straight off Newtown Road? I don't know the answer to that, sorry. But the ambulance parking area is, is the other side of the building as, as to the extension. And they've got a, a more of a kind of car parking area. I think it's an existing uh, area that, and they, it's going to be kind of reformatted and realigned, um, and that's to the west of the building. Um, and, and it will have ambulance bays that would, would be parked in there. And then there's a covered access into the into the building, into the A&E building. So rather than going up the front of it, which is where the extension, proposed extension would be, they'd come in through their own kind of allocated entrance on the other side of the building so it wouldn't get congested with the kind of main thoroughfare so from that point of view the two sets of ambulances whether they're going to the main area or whether to this new area would both still have to go down go quite a way around the site causing potential congestion they they will have to access the site as they do now Yes, that they, they will come right into the site. They, they don't have a, within the plans as submitted to the to us. There's not a, a specific entrance for ambulances to to access this. They they would follow the normal course of the, the traffic. My assumption is they'll come in as they currently do, go past the old A and E down, and then take a right to the new. 
it might be useful if um, we get the applicant to confirm that. So we've got a sort of overview of the site and we're very certain of what we're getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chair. It would be would be helpful because that's exactly as you describe. I understood that the main entrance was to be exactly as is. If this were uh, a, an emergency entrance for ambulance, I hope things improve. But at the moment, you can have 15 ambulances with their engines running uh, outside A and E, and it was, certainly wouldn't be any. You couldn't do that there. I, I'm assuming this is sort of a pickup or a, a, a parking, not to emergency access. If it is, that's different to what's been said in the past. Pat? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, there were two main concerns here, and one of them was the circulatory system around the hospital's arterial road, because all too often that is blocked. And it's essential, utterly essential, that that doesn't continue to happen, uh, not, not just for the sake of the ambulance, of anyone else trying to access the site. There is a, I mean, I, I've lost count of the times I've walked through this area. Um, but there is a car park immediately opposite that, on that tiny road in from Newtown Road, there is a car park. So I'm hoping that they're going to use that for ambulance base as well, as it only makes sense to do so. Um, if they do, that, that would actually alleviate the problem. And the other one, of course, is the concerns about noise. Now, I've heard what uh, our, our consultant there has, has said, and uh, that's somewhat reassuring. I think there are battles on the roof already for existing plant, aren't there? Because the other, the other thing to do with that plant wasn't just the noise. Uh, plant at the hospital has caused glare before. So actually baffling has been pretty essential for both reasons, so it doesn't glare at people trying to sit in their gardens or into their homes. So I'd like to feel that that plant was painted a suitable colour, a non-glare paint, so that we didn't have that problem this time. So I'd like to ask us to condition that. Uh, and if additional plant is required, which I believe it is, that baffling should be provided to prevent further noise, if at all possible. If that's not possible within the, the constraints that the, um, the trust is operating under, then I would ask either that happens, the baffling happens, or within the same condition, we review the noise situation within six months so that local residents are not greatly affected by it. And if that noise situation is not particularly tolerable, that we do something about it pretty promptly. So I, I would ask us to do something about that by way of condition. Is that something we're able to do? Supposed to be plant on the, on the roof of the extension. There are louvers which are designed, so they're quite tall. So rather than them being a, a noise abatement measure, it is to provide screening. Um, to, to the plant that, that's been proposed upon that, that roof. That was our main purpose. Pardon? I think it's screening more than anything, rather than, than, than I mean, it will have an element of tampering some of the noise, um, but, but that's not its main purpose. It is to, to kind of... Clearly, and, and the arterial route. Other than that, I see no reason why we shouldn't approve it to tell the truth. It's much needed. Yes, yeah, so I have the, uh, the pleasure of sitting on Health Overview Scrutiny Committee, and we spent the whole day talking to a whole range of uh, individuals in terms of ambulance weights. And clearly, their existing a &E is far too small. This is a way of building their way out of it, I guess. Just in terms of conditions, can we actually, I don't, I don't know whether it's actually buried in the detail, can we actually put in here the values that we expect them to deliver before they open the facility? You referring to maximum levels? Yeah. I think it's on page 
22, it talks about within a month, in accordance with the provisions of a BS, but it doesn't actually, those of us who don't understand BS, um, give a value that says, this is the target you must meet before you can act. Is that an unreasonable request? It was, uh, the, the, the condition was set out in line with, uh, based on information and with uh, regulatory services, that, that provided um, provided that maximum rating, which to them is it was it was quite clear yeah. what that maximum rating was. But if you want to, we can change that to be a bit more specific or a bit a bit more clarity. Just in the long term. Um, I'm not sure that's already not within condition six because it does say that uh, that the when you read the condition it says within one month of the date of, the, of all plant equipment hereby being uh, hereby approved has been installed and is operationally functional a post completion noise assessment shall be conducted in accordance with the provisions of BS standard yeah. um, um, and to ensure the noise levels being generated do, do not exceed the recommended rates rate levels stipulated in section 5.7 of the WRS technical planning guidance documents. We do have a, a set figure. Wow. Um, so if all we would just be doing is adding that figure in, um, yeah. but it's already stipulated within the conditions. So, so it, is, in there. it is buried within that. Uh, as far as I'm, I, we do still have our um, environmental yeah. health officer. It, we, we may want to start on that. Richard, I understand you want to make a comment. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, British Standard 4142 is an assessment technique for um, gauging the impact of industrial commercial noise from continuous sources. It's not really appropriate for the purposes of controlling noise from uh, dynamic movements from uh, ambulances arriving and drop-offs at A&E reception. Uh, but it's, that would be a very difficult thing to contain and control in accordance with that condition. And uh, I recommend that such matters are usually dealt with through statutory provisions and the Environmental Protection Act 1990 should they occur. So are you you telling us that you'll do measurements once the plant's commissioned, but that will take no account of all the other noise that's going on around the uh, construction? Um, well, post completion of, of the development, um, any other ancillary noise associated with the use, it, it's, it's, it's a crystal ball job, I'm afraid. It's very difficult to gauge what kind of impact it will have. And thus, it's very, it would be very difficult for you to condition it accordingly. Um, normally, when those situations arise, they're regulated through good management practices, uh, either instigated by the trust or as a consequence of joint working between us and the trust or as a consequence of being instigated by formal complaint from residents where we have to look at something retrospectively. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I mean, I, I appreciate that normally this would be a matter for regulatory services um, and that, that would be the way we would normally go and I'd expect that to happen. But I would also hope that we would build in, say, a six-monthly review so that we would have some, some measure to go forward with. Richard? Could you, yes. could you, could you review post um, the building opening? Could you actually do a review six months after? Um, yes, Chair. What we can do is we can we can report back to the committee on any complaints or investigations that have taken place as a consequence of residents being unhappy with the noise climate. Yeah, I was thinking we'd be a bit more proactive and do it anyway, in advance of residents having to complain about it. 
but that would not normally be the function of local authorities in most situations in that we would expect residents to be we're not in in the view of trying to sort of canvas a problem that doesn't exist so um i think the situation here is that there's, there's two potential different sources of noise there's one which is going to be from the pond and that's conditioned and that within and that's the one that's detailed on page 21 and 22 which has a requirement to carry out the assessment and to be built in accordance with and meet the standards out identified within uh, the documentation that it pertains to in relation to the operation of the site the movement the ambulances that's what's being covered under the environmental protection elements which is wrs would actually be who they would be dealing with the noise complaints so um we wouldn't be, in terms of this planning application in front of us, what we, the only control uh, we will be able to put in terms of the uh, actual built form is, is relating to six, and that does have a requirement for that to be built out. Um, if you were, the only review with the, that you would be talking about would be a review of the bond to make sure that it had been operated in accordance with that, um, which doesn't, which seems to be a little bit, um, unnecessary because we're all obviously saying that the plant must meet that noise standard if it was a statutory noise nuisance then and it was identified as coming from that plant um, then that would be something that we would be able to look at in terms of compliance with this condition um, or, in, or go through enforcement from the WRS in terms of the regulatory function and if my colleague from environmental health wants to agree or disagree with that this entitled to Sorry, Richard, are you content with that? Um, yes, I am. Um, WRS is always, well, I'd like to caveat, is always proactive in the sense that we're receptive to complaints and we investigate everything that comes through the door. Um, I mean, and the Simeon is quite correct in saying that we, we've, our focus we, has to be on what's being proposed and not necessarily on existing vehicle movements on the site, which are all, you know, already take place and don't cause problems that we're aware of that have been raised with us directly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Members, any more questions? Jenny. Thank you, Chair. Um, has any provision been made to keep goals out of this new cliff? Because obviously a new piece of roof is new opportunities for gull invasion. And I wonder whether we could build something into that. That's something we can condition or not. We could add a condition that um, details on goal protective measures. Thank you. Any more questions? I'm looking for somebody to propose. Pat's happy to propose the application. A seconder, please. Thank you, Bill. Go to the boat. Recommendations improved in accordance. All those in favour? Well, unanimous chair, it's been carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Richard. Or is he gone? You're welcome. Item six. Campbell's. And I would draw your paper, your attention rather, to the comments from Councillor Lynn Denham. Yeah. Sally. The application is version of the first top front right location yeah. 
The building is within, within um, alongside the building. Why did you? The rear access to the building. Those facing over. I chose the elevator. Existing shop front built form, which we The access to the upper front of the building, there were units. Yeah, on the first. Along with the wind, adjacent to the entrance. Concerns regarding the internal. Those elevations. I recommend to the panel to remind you. Very much. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think this actually is a more important application than perhaps we realise because I think we, we're going to have, get a lot of these kinds of applications. Now, I think we do need to establish some ground rules, bearing in mind the one we discussed last meeting about size and, and facilities and the type of accommodation we are building or we would allow to be built. Um, personally, I have no objection to the mixing of residential and retail. But as I said last time, the residential we're providing or we are facilitating has got to be of a minimum standard. Frankly, I'd like to see a bit more than the minimum. But nonetheless, if we, if we just go to the minimum. So really, I, I've just got a couple of questions and clarifications. Um, and as you know, I always listen to the local member, whoever it is. So I, I'm taking her concerns seriously. Um, and th these are the questions, Mr. Chairman. Um, they're a bit detailed, but they're very important because I think there's a, both the principle, but the detail is important on this one as well. First of all, access. Talked about access to the units of accommodation. Um, this is directly off the shambles and via the bin store with not enough space to store bicycles and bins. That's the first question. The second question is, we're told that both unit one and unit three remain at 31.3 square metres, which is less than the nationally described space standard, which is 37 square metres. If that's the case, then I would have another question, Mr. Chairman. The third question is unit two, which is intended to be an extension of the building. Uh, so then we're told that access is difficult and the accommodation. Well, I'm, as you know, on the odd occasion, accused of some flowery language, Mr. Chairman. Uh, but here we're told that the accommodation looks more like a prison than a home. It's not my words, although I agree with it. Um, so again, uh, and then it goes on about, um, uh, so we're talking about their access with, with no natural light apart from skylight, um, no, wi no windows. I mean, I do find this extraordinary. No, no natural light apart from skylight. Um, and as, as, as the member says, no people won't know what the difference is between day and night. Because, I mean, this is bizarre. Anyway, the final question, Mr. Chairman, is the, the layout of this unit two, it says, and again, I want confirmation of this just to make sure I know what I'm talking about. It says that the bed is next to the kitchen sink within sight of the front door. The bathroom and toilet appear to open directly off the kitchen. Now I'm told, and I have been told on previous occasions that that in terms of hygiene is not acceptable. So, so really, Mr. Chairman, this is a serious point. There, there is a, a unit here that there is, there is a unit here, which obviously somebody has an interest in filling. 
But just because there is a vacancy, it doesn't mean that we must panic and say, There's, we, whatever anybody wants, we'll shove it in if it's not appropriate. I mean, for example, do we know the extent to which the owners of this property have tried to market it for something? I don't know. But this, this is a pig's ear, isn't it? You know, you're gonna have an extension, squash this in, squash it there, rearrange the whole damn thing. Um, and then in the report, um, it talks about details of wall mounted cycle storage. What, inside or outside? Because there's no, there's no room outside, we're told, because of access problems. And I don't think you can have a bike stuck on the wall inside because there are rabbit hutches anyway. So, Mr Chairman, these are important points. And I do ask that just because something is vacant, we don't say, well, we've got to fit it with whatever comes along. Because the, the people living here, I suspect it could be a, a, a young couple or whatever age they are, they might have young children. So are we saying that this is a sensible or suitable accommodation to bring up young children in? Because personally, I don't. We're, all of us around the table are aware of the social problems that we've got, as it is. And I do not think we should be adding more social problems to the future by allowing this kind of um, completely, hopelessly inappropriate development. Councillor Amos, I, mean, I think we just need to put in context for public who may application we approved at our last meeting that was the to allow them to be more generous at proportion this building was awesome. Access to the bin field. Be able to advocate. There's something that I, I did think about. What you can see the, the floor area of the 22 units, which is uh, this. So it's not significantly less the national base standard. And I felt that in terms of layout, worked reasonably well. They included a small area, they have their own access, and you've got yep. Rear unit, whilst it is bigger and is in terms of the layout, something that we can regulation, relationship, bed area, the kitchen area, and its relationship. That will all be some. That will be something to include. That layout and make then on layout units such. Out. Thank you, Chair. If I just very briefly, if I may, just, just come back on those points. Um, I mean, that, that's interesting because the confirmation is that we're saying that something uh, can be built and it's acceptable, obviously saying uh, down for approval. We're saying that it is acceptable to build below the minimum standards, below the nationally described space standards. Now, I assume the national standards are there for a reason, which is to stop inappropriate accommodation. Um, that is 31 square meters. Sorry, um, th that is 37 meters, square meters. This is 31. I don't think that's a marginal difference. I think that's a significant difference. Um, and we should not be approving anything that's below the minimum national standards. Otherwise, what's the point of having national standards? The second point is, and I take the officer's point about the skylight, uh, but again, you see, what concerns me is it's confirmation that the only natural light is a skylight, and you've got four walls, you don't want it's light or day. I mean, I have to agree, it is like a prison. Um, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the final point is about the layout. I mean, the question is to what extent you can rearrange the layout 
you know, so that you don't have a bed next to the kitchen sink inside of the front door, or you don't have the bathroom, the toilet directly off the kitchen. You know, the, the, the space is so constrained here. I don't know how you can rearrange all that to avoid hygiene problems, you know, viewing problems and so on. So my concern is that of those four questions I've asked, three, the answers to three of them are completely unacceptable. Um, it, but if we accept this, then as long as we, we know what we're, what we're allowing developers to build in our city centre, um, and I would be ashamed of it, to be honest, Mr. Chairman, I really would. In relation to the, uh, the the minimum national space standards, they are they've not we have not adopted those. Um, they are a guide. At the moment in time, we don't have a, a development plan document where that's been formally adopted. Um, and if we were intended to do that, we'd have to go through the process of uh, getting supplementary plan document drawn up, and, and that included. So that. Um, it is a guide to us. Um, the issue about the, uh, the the rear unit with only having a skylight, that's a planning consideration. But if you're not happy with an application coming forward where you don't think the lack, where you think the lack of windows other than a skylight is not going to provide appropriate level of amenity, then that would be something from our policy perspective, we would be able to refuse because what you would be able to say is um, the, the proposed development doesn't provide the only natural daylight is through a skylight. And you'd be uh, you'd be okay to do that within policy term, but referring to uh, the minimum space standards, because they're not a, a an adopted, don't form part of a, a adopted policy or a supplementary uh, guidance for the council. We wouldn't be able to quote them as a reason for refusal if members were minded to, but you could raise concerns about the inadequacy of the, the possible, you know, certainly the rear unit in terms of the no, uh, the only natural light being from sky. Well, it does, Chairman, um, and I, I'm grateful for Mr. Manley's advice, but uh, and I wasn't aware of this, but the idea that we haven't adopted minimum standards bothers me. I mean, frankly, if we are saying that it's acceptable for, for this council to have a unit 31 square metres when the national standard is 37, we haven't adopted the national standard. So I suppose I don't want to debate about it now, but the question is, why haven't we adopted that? Why? Um, and I think the obvious corollary is we need to adopt it. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you know, I know I say things about rabbit hutches and, and that, but but this but this is not acceptable. We are a modern authority, you know, and we, we can't allow this kind of accommodation in the, in the high streets. It's certainly obviously something that that we can take away, and something that, that I need to talk to policy team. About in terms of bringing that forward, um, but it, they do take time. They have to go through the whole process of consultation. So um, the, the space standards have come in, but basically we haven't. We need to not so much catch up with it, but where you are saying that you would wish there, there is a view that you would wish development to be in accordance with that, we accommodated um, and, and brought into a point where we can supplementary plan a document that we can then use to but certainly in relation to the to the planning judgment to the rear of the unit that's slightly different in that we're not not ascribing a specific standard we're talking about in terms of amenity for the local residents uh, for the for the proposed occupiers don't have the only sort of light is We have got Pat and Owen and Jenny. And then and, and yes, I think this application has reminded me but more than anything else good that uh, we do need to review at the earliest possible. Because if we're not meeting national 
but the, the last application we saw for actually did have other constraints. It wasn't a building. This is not for for reducing the amenity space involved. This level, I don't. I would say on the grounds of residential amenity, general, not just skylights, but also the space in there and the configuration of that space, I would say is not acceptable. Thank you, Pat. I'm on the same lines as Pat with this. My gut reaction is that this site is suited to two. I'd be a lot more comfortable if it was two rather than or rather one normal one and two tiny ones. I wonder if that's something. Um, for the purposes of the application in front of us, we're, we're charged with determining the application here. Obviously, what would come off the back of it if members were unhappy with this and if members were minded to refuse it and actually that went through that process, then obviously that would be something they back in. Just as a point of clarification in terms of the space, there isn't, just to clarify, there isn't anything stopping you refusing from if you think they're too small, but you can't use the national space standards as you. So it's just a clarification as a point of, uh, of uh, well, point of clarification. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the 33.5, say, metres versus 37 is only 85%, which is 15% of living space is quite small. And like others, I think we need to recommend the council adopt base standards at the earliest opportunity. I don't see why it should take that much comfort. I think we should all want decent accommodation for our citizens. On the Front two flats, they're too small, uh, but lacking in, in imagination. But the one at the back, no, that site, um, I don't think is an appropriate lighting source for that. Flat. And when you look at the conservation advisory panel, because they did look at it, even though it wasn't listed, it's in an area that is um, important. And has a lot of buildings around it that are important. They said that it's unacceptable in the current format, and I think we need to take note of that as well. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I agree with, with, with everything that's been said so far. I just, but I'd just like to expand slightly on this light. We all take light for granted, but I think none of us, but we look out of the window so many times a day. You can't look out of the window there. You, if, if you want to see, you know, outside, you've got to look up. And it will be just so dismal on, on a dull day. I just don't think it's acceptable. So uh, I'll be voting against it. And to say, it reminded me of the Ballad of Reading Jail, actually. That little tent of blue we prisoners call the sky. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just to echo everyone. Good, but we want them. I, I, I'm slightly confused that we appear to be applying building regulations to the planning. Then we have the uh, this comment submission <laughs> that uh, would this be allowed if it weren't odd one? I'd suggest if it were in London, it would be allowed and it would be worth a bloody fortune. <laughs> so it's it's it, uh, I I don't see that a, a, a sound. So what, where I'm going to is it just intuitively this looks dreadful. But I'm not really sure, even now, what the objection is, other than the fact we don't.
Um, I think the, the the point about video control is that we were saying that part of that objection, part of the sound was about the position of relative rooms and facilities. Um, so it sits outside planning, so we wouldn't be we wouldn't be looking at that. They would need to get building regulations. Their requirements separate regime that they hold. Um, in terms of the actual reason for refusal, um, Blame must I think was was about to propose the those and, and at that point then I can come back if I think there are any concerns associated with those um, with um can I just clarify then if not necessarily in this case, but if we approve something that didn't conform to the building regulation, then the, the uh, regulation enforcement would prevent it being done. The, the planning is planning is its own separate uh, regime of legislation, and it doesn't grant or permit. Uh, the approval of any other any other statutory duty or requirement under other legislation. So, such as if you grant planning permission for a um, hot food takeaway, it was still required to go through licensing. It still will go required to go through building control. So, it, 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 we're talking about the actual use here or the actual proposed development in front of you. separate requirements and leg separate legislation covering covering their own areas. That shares what I thought. Going beyond, but there's going to be a brilliant reason to object to that. Bought it. Because always there's some great interest. Councillor Roberts has said. Um, well, yeah. Okay, so um, maybe I'll speak. I, I would move that we refuse it. Reasons of uh, lack of amenity. Um, in other words, we're not. Building a prison, or we're supposed to be building a flat. I don't know what to put that in technical language, Mr. Um, and what, and I understand what you're saying because we haven't adopted the minimum standards. We can't refuse it on the minimum standards. Um, but I think that on, on the ground of amenity, um, well, lack of amenity. I mean, there's no outdoor space. There's no there's no play area, for children or anything. So it's indoor amenity. That is to say, if you want to know what the weather is, you have to go outside to find out. Um, and in terms of outdoor amenities, there's no sp there's no space at all. And um, concerns about access um, is there sufficient access? Um, I think that would be enough, Mr. Mark. But obviously, under the new system, uh, your job is to, to guide us on the best reasons for refusal. Of course, members, that's what members. Um, in, in terms of of residential amenity, outdoor space, these are flats above shops in a, in a retail setting. Um, there are permitted development rights to convert um, flats above shops. Uh, um, and there isn't normally a requirement for amenity space to be provided in association with conversion of these. So ordinarily, you wouldn't be looking for an amenity space provision associated with this type of development. It would be more the amenity of the future occupiers by reason of the limited size of the proposed units and also the particular rear unit lack of of natural daylight uh, as a result of poor design which is basically from a roof line no windows at ground uh, at eye level that they can look at get a view from so that would be where i think you'd were more coming from which is that, that they are small units we're not used we're not referring to the the, the the space standards what you're saying is that by reason of the small the small size of the units not providing any but standard of amenity for the future occupiers also in relation to the region adequate access to daylight uh, and outlook as well are you okay with that I think Mr. Mann has summed up exactly as I would have done. So, no, no daylight at all, actually. So, uh, anyway, so as I say, I mean, would it, would it actually, I mean, uh, 
uh, that's Mr. Mann, it's not necessarily a facetious question, but surely if somebody can't see what the weather is from inside their property, there must be something wrong with the property, surely. We, um, part, part of the reason why it was within that question uh, of adequate when I won't give you a history lesson, Mr. Chairman, but Black Hole of Calcutta comes to mind. I think there's a little bit of light, but not very much. We have a proposal to refuse, which is second. Well, give us Yeah, so it's a concern. It, it almost it sounds as though uh, not very keen on Come on, just ask a question. Um, the proposal that we're going to vote on now, does it include any mention of the fact that you think it's too small? Because I do think it's too small, and, I'm, and I would rather we, we put that we're concerned about that, but that we don't give that as our reason because we haven't to stand on. But we say we're concerned about it. Um, I think uh, Councillor Amos was, was actually, when, we, when I went back over what Councillor Amos has said, I'm, it's not my reason for refusing. Members, but the council members did uh, raise or was mentioning concerns about the size. Of the so, whilst we wouldn't be specific relating to the national space standards, we have made what was I understand saying is for and this is providing an unacceptable. Uh, mean. Mr. Chairman, Council Clear is learning the, the extraordinary, incomprehensible intricacies of planning. In other words, we know why we want to refuse it, but we've yeah. got to give another reason. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm clear. I'm... They would, but they would carry out an assessment of the whole development. Yeah. The, the permitted development rights, which we were talking about, relate to above a shop after which it would why we have the asset in front of us for free. So yes, they would they would look at them, but they, they view that they assess the whole proposal. <coughs> um, and if there are any, any elements that which they Rear unit delegated corporate
Application is at 79 Windsor Avenue. It's for the change of use of a small house of multiplication apartments, state papers in relation. Location. The rear of the site. Apartment. Here's a view along the suburban street. At, at the end of the road is a. Uh, laid out. I understand it, it's not used. Here's the access alongside the, the between, between the houses. It doesn't appear. Is it from the other way? Relationships, apartments. This is just to demonstrate that within the within the floor plans for the One on the ground floor. Kitchen extends across the rear of the property. Patients, you can see that it's been amended. The proposed floor plan, a ground unit, and it has two bedrooms. Existing living room changed into bedroom inserted into the rear extension on the first floor, a kitchen is proposed into the front of the last slide is the proposed site location. The site plan, there is proposed to be a new Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to ask really about one issue, um, which of course is, is car parking. Um, I, I mean, the re report starts by telling us um, there are parking restrictions in the area due to historic issues with on-street car parking. Here we, you know, here we go again. The area already has parking problems. We're now looking at three bedrooms under the design guide, which I think we have adopted, or, well, Cal has adopted, and I think we adhere to that, three bedrooms equals two car parking spaces, and they're uh, uh, offering one. So automatically, we have a car parking problem, seems to me. So um, uh, that really is my question, Mr Chairman. Um, car parking issue, uh, we're going to add to it. Um, so, so here we go. As I say, here we go again. I mean, what more can I say? We would assume the officer would prefer to settle. We recognise the historic issues with car parking. Regarding the proposals, given that there is an improvement, not necessarily. to the existing so yes it doesn't conform but...
The yeah. Buffett, oh, Buffett, yeah, yeah. I think. I remember changing the rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to ask. Um, so, yeah, so it, I think that on balance it was considered. Any other questions or queries from members? Although I accept the car park provision is always an issue and um, it's an ongoing fight, the accommodation appears to be much better than is currently there. They've got a one bedroom flat with plenty of room for the resident to move around, the two bedroom as well. Plus, they've got their allocation of garden. So, on balance, I don't think it's bad enough for us to refuse purely on the parking, because uh, overall, the accommodation is better than the property. Thank you. 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 Thank that expected or will there be a gate for the person to get to the end of their garden without having to walk through somebody else's? There isn't a gate currently. I presume that because they've got the access that runs alongside that that would be, they'd kind of come out the front, front door. That right of access. Audrey? I was just wondering what what use is made of the space at the front of the house at the moment, which is now apparently goes ahead. Part of it will be used actually for garden at the moment. Quite a significant scheduled way, most of it. So, so it's not really a garden. Yeah, it's not. It's not kind of different means. Okay, in that case, I mean, I was going to say it would be a shame to pave over any more garden if already um, it's all, if it's already not a garden. Then would it be possible to 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 to, to ask for some kind of surface that allows water to permeate. Um, Councillor Udall mentioned the tree that's going to be removed. Says what that is. I quite realise where it is. Really quite substantial. There's a comment from the neighbours about given that you're now moving bedroom, bedroom, living rooms. Or we can Effectively improve part of the, the kind of residential drive probably would be something. Vision. 
that it would be it there'd be greater parallels between those who So it's actually a new um, that it'd been used. Anybody wish to know something? Have a proposal to approve. Vega seconded by. Condition. Okay. Item eight. Five Strawberry <laughs> Avenue. Yep. Demolition of the We have extension to help. Demolition of existing garden outbuildings. Site location planning. Buildings in Shrubbery Avenue. However, those are being. Shrubbery Avenue is subject to an article. Shrubbery Avenue, overgrown and fairly empty. The building, the existing building. Yeah, and it shows extensions. Buildings, dentists, which I also note that there is elevation of existing ground floor. Elevations, elevation, is the proposed ground floor plan, rear units proposed by the removal of garden area, relating to the area. Here are the Backs on the scene. First floor. Your units in place. Is the The other side elevation. Post rear elevation, which shows post extension. Oh. 
I would look at the St. George relationship and date. He was along St. George Coast of Oregon. Existing rear boundary, existing brick wall and double gates to access the existing outfield. I had a view along St. George's Road. Further view along the lane, and you can see a number of properties. Last slide is the zoomed in view of the Originally, the scene. Question. Oh, it's not. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Sorry. Thank you. One by way of a question. One by way of a comment. In the light of recent, uh, one of the previous applications today, can you? That all of the uh, the flat closed windows, not just roof line. That's the question. <laughs> I'll reserve the comment for a moment. Yes, they all. The other thing is, um, in condition, I think it's five, uh, about design, it doesn't explicitly mention the front wall. And I think if this is a this is in a conservation area, I think if the front wall were destroyed, that would be very detrimental to the look of the area. Um, and I'd like to see it explicitly mentioned so that the wall is conserved properly. The scheme originally included demolition of that front base as part So we're clear that the wall has to be properly repaired and maintained. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, could I just first of all, it's a question and a comment. Um, paragraph 2.10 talks about the Article 4, what, what can be done and what can't be done. Uh, and I've read here examples include changes to the principal or side elevation, alterations to the roof on the front or side elevation. Um, and I see there's a light, um, <laughs> assuming it gets some light impact, um, into that flat. So that, that's, I'm not sure how that is consistent with, with approval. Um, and then we come to the, <clears throat> the usual problem, as it always is, of parking. We're now talking about seven bedrooms uh, with, sorry, uh, seven flats with nine bedrooms. Nine bedrooms could obviously be not unreasonably, 18 people. And if I understood the officer correctly, there are four parking spaces. So where do all these other cars go?
residents. Right, so so, the, so the parking is on street main, is it? Parking floor at the back. So, so there's no obviously there's no parking issues then. If Miss Hanshaw were here, I'll, I'll be asking her the same question. Have to answer in her. In other words, we haven't got a clue, have we, really? But um, um, our hire engineer is, is our consultee, um, and they feed into the process, give us advice on what we'll be able to sustain. If there was a concern over this, they would certainly be raising it in a formal reason. They've considered this. In fact, actually, they've reduced down the was proposed to be five, but they were concerned that because of the narrowness of the access to the rear um, to get visibility, they reduce it down. So they they think that with four, they think that the, it could be well served in its location, um, is subject to local um, parking control. So they're saying that on balance, they do not see that this problem. So that we have to, as as officers, take the advice of our Highway engineers in informing us as to the the ability to actually sustain a reason for refusal. They think it is that it is acceptable. Thank Mr. Manley for that, but I can assure him, I can give him quite a few examples of where highways have recommended refusal, and the recommendation has been to approve. So it seems to be you, you pick and choose, but that's that's life. But can we come back to the Article Four? Because again, I mean, as Caltrain has reminded us, it's a conservation area got this light, you know, stuck right in the roof. To me, it is ugly. It, it detracts from what is a beautiful building. But given what's happening to it, um, with nine, uh, what is it, seven flats in there, uh, God, goodness knows what's happened to the integrity of that building. But there we are. But in terms of Article 4, how is this consistent? Um, Article 4 directions aren't, they do not preclude this type of development. What basically, saying is that where development could otherwise take place, permitted development right, or actually not be deemed to be development at all in terms of, of some of these elements, that you would have to apply for planning to do it. So it's not precluding it. What it's basically saying is you have to apply for it, and then that allows us as an authority to bring it in front of. Uh, members here today and for those members to make the decision as to whether or not they consider that the proposal is um, one of the important things to remember and as, it, as we move forward with, with talking about flatted development one of the things that's very important to remember about that it is a planning balance but we are bringing forward additional residential units which takes pressure within brownfield sites it does take pressure off um, new greenfield sites having to be found to brought forward through the local. So, allowing us to redevelop, or allowing the, the applications to come in to redevelop existing stock and extend to them and, and, and generate additional units is actually something that we can consider when we're determining applications. So, there is a planning balance between changes that are being made to a building and what actually ultimately appears against the benefits of actually additional adding to our housing stock and reducing pressure on green. Just, I just, Mr. Mann is smiling, so he's, he's provoked me into a very brief response, which is there's plenty, and in fact, there's loads, there's endless amounts of ugly derelict land in Birmingham. If we were talking about brownfield sites, loads of space there. We don't need green to use green space. Birmingham, it's got all the transport links. It's got apparently, you know, goodness knows what's going on in that city. But there's loads of land. So my advice is to tell the developers to go to Birmingham. Uh, it's a beautiful place, loads of derelict land, loads of derelict buildings to go there. Then we won't have, we won't have all these problems. But I'm not expecting a response from that, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for that. I've got Owen and then Andy. But first, if I can ask. 
conservation area, when they looked at this, was this the original scheme? Did they express a object to strongly to the works at the front of the building? The only works at the front of in relation to the original proposal, which included the demolition of that front boundary wall and the hard right. sand. But we're content with skyline. Given on balance and given. I mean, is it my? Am I correct in thinking that? moment this is five plans all on street parking from seven four spaces rest on street parking is that correct that that seems be a better situation to me I wanted to clarify that I got the impression that would be you seeing lights on. Certainly a number of the To say I've paid for it. Urban Green Oaks. Marjorie. Um, I, I've got a concern about the article for um, rule about the well, whatever Article Four says about the installation of photo. photo Photovoltaics being um, inconsistent with Section 734, where it says that um, there will be photovoltaic panels installed. So, I, I, first of all, is there a contradiction there that Article 4 says that you can't have them, or 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 you might need to apply planning? And and secondly. Um, my other concern is where are they going to be on the building because it's south facing and, and therefore the obvious place to put them is the front and I do think that will be a great shame but, though I believe in I've got one other concern uh, I'll come back to you later when I remember what it is there's a restriction in There is a, a restriction in this area of our and that's them that we that they are not specifically restricting them, it's just saying that you need um in terms of this site, the condition Photovoltaics are used, but if they can't, then they will use, they can other forms of, they consider that they, they will be able to meet it. Yeah, it is self-facing, but they may be able to, to arrange. That's what they've, the information. I should have read it, but I. Uh, and I've remembered what my other point is as well, which is that the condition five um, 
mentions planting. It, it only seems to mention it in uh, to detail that we normally go to in terms of, you know, a full planting scheme. Trees have to be placed if they die. Why this is treated differently. Differently, because there's some quite substantial planting. That was part of it. Um, the other part of it is that most of what will be required in order to buy those areas, it will be the gate, your um, those shared spaces. So that was the reason why the condition. That this. And, and can I just follow up on, on the hard surfacing again? Can we, can we all specify that the hard surfacing is permeable? And the wording of condition five to. Permeable. Thank you, Chair. Um, as a councillor for this neighbourhood, this version is not as bad as the previous version, or at least as a front wall now, um, because the original version was demolishing the wall, putting car parking spaces right up to the property basically, which would have been complete anathema for this neighbourhood. But St George's Lane South a really strong personality of its own. And at the moment, there's a, a tall wall and a gate giving privacy and security to the property. The proposal removes that and opens up that space. And I, I think that that will change the character of the lane. There'll be four parking spaces. And I know that the a dentist next door, people park at the back of that property to go and to use that service. But it'll be extra... Um, moving in that space, even if it's only four cars twice a day. So I, I do have concerns about that. I also have concerns that this is, in my opinion, um, over development of the site. Seven properties within a very small area without very much um, space for amenity. And well, apart from the fact that whatever happens, there shouldn't be permitted development going for this site. I, I just think that it's too much for the space and will detract from the character. And I'm interested that since the plan was amended, you haven't gone back to the Conservation Area Advisory Committee to find out whether they are happy with the new version. Um, I know that doesn't to do with Lowesmore Wharf recently, um, people weren't reconsulted with the new plans coming out, and I think that is, is a, a failure when, there's a, when there is a change like this. So I would like to see in future that um, if there is a significant change to a plan, that there is a reconsultation process to be taken. They were consulted. I've attended all the last recent ones. So I haven't. I saw the original one, which was um, derided. I've not seen the later version. I, I don't understand, but I don't know.
the in, in relation to the legislation, there's a statutory duty to consult on applications. There is actually, uh, notwithstanding the fact that it's been through the process and they have they were consulted as part of that process, there's actually no, no statutory duty. So that that's that's from a, that that perspective. But in terms of what Sally is saying, is this wasn't brought forward. Um, so we are where we are with that in terms of it. Fortunately, that not been they they chose not to respond for whatever reason. Thanks, Lavon. Barnes raised a good point. Of the war, reducing the privacy. Could we suggest another war? Airport to then gardens. So it's a little bit more like. I think that rather defeats the object of highways coming. Five to four. Enable you to manoeuvre. So which way are the gates going to open? To clarify, I think what you're saying is that you've got the parking spaces and then you have a wall behind the parking spaces so that the amenity would be behind that. We could oh, certainly, okay. that would be part of the landscaping. We have a condition that asks for the, the details of, of the boundary treatment for the development. So it would be effectively the lane, then the parking spaces, and behind that there would be a boundary treatment of some form. Hey, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a couple of points. I think uh, I don't think we need to get too hung up on ignoring the advice of highways. As I said earlier, I can give you a number of examples where highways have recommended refusal and the recommendation has been to approve. So all of a sudden, we're now very concerned about what highways have been telling us. When, when it suits people, they ignore what highways say. So we've either got to be consistent and listen and accept their recommendations, or we don't. But we can't pick and choose. The second point... Mr Chairman, is and it's something Councillor Barnes raised, I think she's raised some interesting points, um, about reconsulting on changes. Um, Mr Manny, I'm sure he was right because he said it, but uh, that there's no statutory requirement so to do. I would like us as a good committee to make it a rule that we do automatically reconsult because I know of other examples where there has been a change, the developer tries to slip things in on the grounds that, oh, they're not, they're not material, they're very minor, so, so, you know, so we just push it through, uh, and the residents don't know about it, and then, and so on and so on. So I think the residents are as entitled to as much consultation as the developer is to office of time. So I would say, as a rule, we should consult when a new application comes in, even if it's an amended one. We're not obliged by law, obviously, to do so, but I would guess it's good practice and, and, and fair. Just on the highways point, get an opinion from her. Yes, sometimes we do ignore it, but, but that's life. And sometimes we agree with it. Um, importantly, in relation to planning, each site is determined on its own merits, and there will be specific sites where highways other sites where they are happy with a substandard or a parking standard which is below uh, a lower standard each site's different and and it is not being an inconsistent approach what it is, is that they are applying a standard but not all the, the standards don't apply across the board so what they've done is looked at this site looked at the specifics of the site and its location and considered that the the parking being provided here in fact that by the way, to make sure that the parking actually being provided is uh, is sufficient and meets the standards to not cause problems. And in, in respect of a, a point Councillor Clary uh, uh, asked earlier on, there is a potential for parking in there. It is an informal area. Um, and I just thought I'd drop back to clarify it is an informal area. This is seeking to, to formalise that parking area. And at the moment, as you were saying, the officer was saying, it doesn't appear to be greatly used. This is going to actually be for four parking spaces, which will be laid out and serviced to serve the site. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so we're consistently inconsistent. I'll go along with that. I think we can agree on that. Consistently inconsistent. But didn't I raise another point? 
uh, consultations. Basically, um, what we do in relation to planning applications when we get an, uh, when we get amended plans in, quite often we will we will have objections being raised schemes from various different bodies, um, or in fact, actually being raised from uh, the, on deferred items coming from committee where you deferred it and they've gone away and changed the scheme. Quite often, the changes, the amended plans we receive are addressing the concerns being raised. And therefore, you always go out and reconsult, even though it may have reduced an element of it, which was the fundamental objection from the excessive rearward projection of that element's been moved. Um, if we were to keep going out, that, then that actually slows the process down. So there's a the degree of flexibility in the process. Um, where we will, it is a value judgment as to whether or not we go out to reconsultation, um, and if it is addressing the concerns being raised, then we will. Then we will be basically. Um, there are occasions when we don't go out and reconsult because that move the objection. In this particular instance, we did go out to just that that wasn't picked up, but very specifically in relation to the specific concerns raised in relation to the proposal. They have been, to all intents and purposes, addressed by the the retention of the wall um, and all the concerns that were raised in relation to the front element, other than the skylight in the front, which was raised or not. But a vast majority of it was addressed. So we did reconsult, but we did also, in the same breath, um, get amended plans, which removed a significant amount of their objections. Any more questions? Comments, really? It was just that uh, I think we're making slightly heavy weather of this, to tell the truth. Um, it seems to me to be a reasonable use or reuse of a building that does need a reuse and that's fallen into some, well, I wouldn't exactly say decay, but it's certainly getting that way. Um, and we do need to keep the conservation area up. I think actually this is a reasonable way of of doing that. Uh, there is convenient, um, well, there's a convenient bus stop just around the corner, in fact. So there's no problem with people getting around into town or anywhere else, because that one goes to Birmingham as well. Um, so that's, I don't think that's a tremendous issue. Uh, it is relatively close to the city centre. So, you know, getting around is not going to be a huge issue, hopefully, for those who might live there. Aside from that, I mean, I can't help the feeling that, give, uh, obviously, a ward member has, has called this in, and so this is before us. And the only other reason I can think why it really ought to be before us is the Article 4 direction. Other than that, I would have thought it was kind of straightforward or feasible. Uh, I'd just like to point out that there were an awful lot of objections to the original. Um, there have only been two responses to the one of which was they're satisfied with the changes. So I think that points in favour of approval. Thank you. Any more questions? Certainly have. Those list to approve the recommendation subject to an amendment. Those in favour? Against? One. And Andrew. Thank you, Chair. Short, um, um, this is uh, 
members may recall uh, on the last planning committee, which is 25th of November, uh, an item that we uh, was minded to refuse um, by, by the committee members due to the harm uh, to the character of the area and the concerns that the extension would be incongruous and visually intrusive to the street scene, uh, particularly the size, bulk and massing of the extensions. As we reported on the 25th of November, uh, we felt uh, that this was a balanced uh, recommendation, and you can obviously read uh, the original report at Appendix 1. Um, so following the um, previous committee, um, we have brought back uh, further paper, um, and the reason for refusal is now set out at Section 5 of your report. Um, I don't propose to go through uh, all the presentation again because it's obviously got quite a lot of, of pictures. Um, but just to go, just so members are familiar, we'll just scroll very quickly through the photos. You can see the street scene, back gardens, uh, neighbouring properties. Keep going. Looking out from the that's neighbouring property, block plans. Again, showing the 45 degree angles and configurations and uh, how the uh, proposed extension. Okay. Other than that, as brought the recommendation, we recommend approval. Uh, Council, we have. Five to reflect the situations of. Thank you. Questions? Oh, it's too much, isn't it? <coughs> um, thank you, Mr Chairman. I, well, I, I don't think this item needs to detain the committee very long because it was only two weeks ago, I think, that unanimously we refused it. Um, nothing has changed in those two weeks. Um, paragraph five has nicely summarised the reasons for refusal. So I'd like to move that we, for the reasons in paragraph five, and to be consistent with our original refusal, we refuse planning permission. Um, and I think, if I may just a little, little quip there, Mr Chairman, but I think this does prove the wisdom of the Council's decision to get rid of this daft double jeopardy rule, because two weeks on, um, the officers have come back and said exactly what they said two weeks ago. <laughs> Think the member said made any difference so i think we are ex exactly in the right position um anyway i i move the refusal for the reasons given sorry Ed. yeah i i second that um i'd also like to um just elaborate that the views that were put forward two weeks ago certainly by myself haven't changed at all um i extending in inverted commas all three exterior walls apart from the it's, it's systematically rebuilding and altering it beyond recognition of its original design it will be totally alien in form to the landscape in which it sits and bear no relation to the street on the west side of this house is another detached house the east side lies a pair of semi-detached houses. If this development ahead, it would be totally incongruous um, in, in the street scene, totally alien. And there's, there's certainly nothing, as Councillor Alan Amos said, nothing has, has changed in those two weeks that um, on merit would commend it um, for acceptance. So it, it'll just be an odious presence in, in the landscape and therefore this again should be rejected in its entirety yeah. thank you questions or comments it's just that i think this is incredibly poor design it does feel like over design the recommendations Those in favour of the 
Dan Can I make one comment before we go, Chair? This, if we either consistent I was intrigued by the agenda for next week. It's all a load of roundabouts, and I just could explain why we're. <laughs> Because of the way our constitution is set up, they're all seen as individual. So the intention is we'll have one presentation, first proposal, right there, and then we'll follow on with all the others with just the island. This is the island. The constitutional work. That's oh. the way around it, isn't it? Probably. Before we have committee next. We have one item of any other business. Councillor Amos. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for um, allowing me to raise it as well. Um, and it, actually, I won't keep the committee long, but it, it is a very important issue again, it's enforcement. Um, and I, I want to raise it because it, it raises an issue in particular, but in general as well. Um, and it's to do with uh, Pitt Marston House. It's been raised with me by um, residents. To do with Pitt Marston House, and, and members uh, may recall that we refused this. I think it might have been unanimous, I can't remember. Um, in October 2020, went to appeal um, and the appeal was rejected. <clears throat> now, this whole saga, um, this was, if I can remind the committee, this was about converting a house into holiday lets. Um, and I think even the officers recommended refusal. I mean, obviously. Um, the, this whole saga has, however, been going on for five years. <clears throat> um, and notwithstanding the refusal by this committee and the refusal of the appeal, um, residents have contacted me to say that breaches of planning permission are still going on. In fact, they've never stopped whether there's a planning, a live planning application or not, or whether there was an appeal or not. Um, and uh, so really, regardless of planning enforcement, uh, the, the, the problem continues. And so, therefore, I have been asked to really find out, and of course they want to know, as indeed we all do, I'm sure, um, why it is that this kind of situation is allowed to continue. Um, my fear, and I hope I'm wrong, Mr Chairman, is that if somebody puts in another planning application, all the enforcement is put on hold. So all they have to do is put in an application, whether it's serious or not, and then that stops any enforcement taking place anyway. I sincerely hope that is not the case, but what I've been asked to do is to confirm that that isn't the case, um, because I understand a new application has been put in for something else, um, which for some reason has been spun out for an awful long time, very conveniently, um, and that application, there are 32 objections to that, but obviously I'm, we can't discuss that now. So, But I just mention that because the scale of this problem, Mr. Chairman, is very widespread in the middle of a residential area. And, and I don't have any answers as to why nothing's happened five years, even though we've refused an application, the inspectors refused the appeal, and it's still going on. And people are sick and tired of it because it's a residential area. And it seems there's one law for some people and another law for somebody else. The site in question is currently uh under investigation. We are investigating it. So it is. It's... Mr. Mann has chosen his words carefully, but I don't want careful words. What I need, what I think the residents want is action. And I think in all honesty, Mr. Chairman, they're entitled to know when this is going to stop. It, five years is an awful long time. 
um, for, for nothing to have happened. Um, and it's really not fair. Uh, you know, as I've often complained about the, the developers get away with almost anything. This one has, and, and uh, in my opinion, enough is enough. As I say, we are looking into this. You did, you did raise it with me. I have come back to you. I'm currently speaking to the enforcement officer, and we are shortly. But obviously, it is part of an on, uh, of uh, ongoing enforcement investigation, um, and therefore, you know, we are in a public meeting, and and we need to be. So what I'm saying to you is, we are investigating the expedient. Up, uh, update you in due course. Well, in that case, Mr. Chairman, can I just ask for a definition of how long is ongoing? The, um, as I said, we are looking into this matter. How long that takes um, in terms of we we have processes and procedures that we follow that statutory requirements and um, undertaking investigations. How long they take is how long they take. I, but we are, as I say, we are actively investigating this at the moment. We'll update you in due course. Okay, so we share, what's the definition of in due course? <laughs> Can I ask a slightly different question? In this enforcement process, is there such a thing as a stop notice? Has one been issued? I think uh, Mr. Manuel really appropriate just in this going enforcement if there are any more questions comments otherwise i'll see you again next week absolutely but hopefully it'll be a shorter meeting if we can actually get